another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create a table view in your iOS app. So pretty straightforward video. Let's get started by firing up Xcode. We're going to create a new project. We're going to pick a single view application. Let's give this uh, the title of context. Let's make sure that this is set to Swift. This we can leave on storyboard, save it wherever you'd like, and let's get into it. So if you're not familiar with what a table view is, uh, if you go and open up the contacts app on your iPhone, you'll see that you have a bunch of names listed in a table. That's all a table view is. You can customize it as much as you'd like, and you can actually create uh, an app similar to Facebook, where your newsfeed is actually just an elaborate table view. So before we get into all that fun customization, what we're gonna do is let's boot up our simulator. And let's also expand our Xcode window uh, to give us some more room to work with here. We're gonna go to our view controller and there are essentially two ways to create a table view. You can do it in the storyboard and you can do it programmatically. So we're gonna be working with a storyboard. So go to your main.storyboard and what we want to do is come up here and search for a table view and we'll drag on a table view onto our view controller from here we want to apply constraints to it so come down here apply 0 0 0 and 0 which will pin this table view to all four sides of the screen let's head back to our view controller we need to create an ib outlet for our table view. It will be a table view with a force unwrap because we are connecting it in the storyboard. Head back to your storyboard and let's right click this and drag from our created outlet table view to that table view that we added on the view controller. The next thing we wanna do is click on this, open up the inspector window, which is this right panel here in here, we want to add a prototype cell. So let's increment this number. We'll see in here that we get this prototype cell. A prototype cell is basically a cell template that we can create multiple of through the table view data source functions that we'll be implementing. So this particular cell and every cell you add will need an identifier. So if we select it over here, come on to this side again, we need to provide an identifier after selecting it. So select it, come over here, and let's give it an identifier of cell. You can call it whatever you'd like, something that is easy to remember that we're going to be using later. So from here, let's go back to our view controller. We need to specify what the delegate and data source for this table view will be. A delegate and a data source is a class that conforms to the delegate and data source protocols for the table view. And that class is essentially responsible for handling interactions and providing data for our table. So this view controller class will essentially become our delegate and data source for the table view. We assign it simply by saying the table views delegate is self. And we do the same for the data source. Now to implement these delegates and data source, we have errors popping up here because we haven't implemented this yet. However, what we're going to do is we're going to say a extension delegate and similarly data source. The delegate functions are used to handle interactions of cells. So there is a function in here in which we can capture every time the person taps a cell and that function is did select row at index from which we'll just tap or we'll just print the you tapped me string for the data source we need to provide a minimum of two functions the first function is number of rows which is the number of rows that we want to show in the table a row is the same as a table cell and the second function that we need to add here is cell for row 
we need to DQ a cell with a identifier, which is the identifier we created in the storyboard and a index path. So this DQ function is a function in which people often have trouble. So we will explain it. We're going to return the cell to this function as the, it, as the return type of the function is a UI table view cell and it expects it to be returned. So DQing a cell is the same as using the template cell over and over and we're going to swap out the data. And this is something to do with performance with the table view itself. Essentially, we don't need to create multiple UI table view cells. We want to use the same template over and over and swap out our data. So if you think of the Facebook app in which you have a news feed and multiple posts, the similarity between every post is every post has a profile photo, a like button, a comment button, a share button, and some content. We don't need to create multiple versions of that cell, but what we could do is take the template and shove in our data, making each one look different. So DQing is the process of trying to see if there's a previous available cell and using it as the template for the new cell. This cell that we've added onto our storyboard is the default cell that is built in to the UI kit framework. We haven't customized it at all. And this default cell has a text label property. So we will set the cells text label text to hello world. And we'll see as we run the app in just a moment here, we'll have three cells with hello world. So let's go ahead and hit command R to run our application in the simulator. Once it builds, we'll see it appear on the right here. And just like that, in just a moment, we have three cells. When we tap a cell, we see in the console, we get a printed out message that we supplied in this delegate. And that's how you create a UI table view using Storyboard with Swift and Xcode in iOS. Now to close up this video, what I'd like to show is how you can show dynamic content in the actual table. So let's say we want to show a user's contacts and let's say we have the contacts in an array. So we might have an array of names. So let's say we have John Smith, Dan Smith, Jason Smith. So we have the Smith family going on. Cool. So we have this array of these four strings. So instead of returning three, which is a hard coded value for number of rows in this table view, we can return the count of this and we can assign this to be the index path dot row for that array index path represents the position in the table a table is comprised of sections and rows a table can have n number of sections and each section can have n number of rows if we don't supply the number of sections by default it is one there is another function here which we can specify number of sections similar to number of rows however because we have one this makes no difference more or less the index path has a section off of it and a row you can think of these as a mapping for example section one can have row one section two can have row one as well so this is a mapping between a section and row for n number of elements in your table so let's go ahead and run our application once more by hitting Command R. And we'll see that the names that we entered into our array up here are the names that appear over here. And that's all there is to it. Now you've created a table view in iOS and you have endless possibilities of implementing it. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe for several Swift and iOS related videos. Like the video if you found it helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I encourage you to check out our video on using custom table view cells to customize this table view. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.